Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Before we get started, now we need to remember Brother Philip. <coughs> Brody said he wasn't feeling too good this morning. Been having trouble breathing, so we need to remember him. We need to remember Barbara Jean and Sister Vernell. Any other prior request? Remember Jackie when he goes back to the dock. When's that? I don't know. They're supposed to call him. He can't have his other surgery until he goes to a heart doctor. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I remember you telling me yeah. that. But they hadn't called him as yesterday to see when to come and check him out. Uh, let's remember Brother Jackie. Brother David, too. I'm hoping we can get both of them back in church. There was a family in Hiawassee High Dam, two of their sons, two sons out of one family, was killed right now. Yeah, I remember reading that. I think one's in Merlinger, ain't he? Yeah, he's the one that was driving. Is he? Okay. Yeah, I think one of David's neighbors was in a car wreck real bad, too. So. Okay, let's remember them. Remember the whole family, because it's, right. I mean, it's not just the one that's in the hospital that's hurting. I mean, it hurts the whole family when I'm somebody, sorry. you know, a car wreck. Or, One's bad enough, but two, you know, would be yeah. I'll tell you what, let's do things a little bit different this morning. Let's all come up here to the altar and join hands. Do a great prayer. Let's pray for this country that it will get back on track. <clears throat> There's a lot of things going on in this country that, that's not godly. And we need to pray for all of our government leaders, not just our nation, but our state, our counties. Let's, let's, let, let's pray for this nation that, that uh, we need a great revival is what we need. Today I was thinking about my life here on earth, thinking back over the years. There's been a lot of hard sorrow and pain. There's been disappointments and tears. There's also the joy and a deep set in peace that only the more of him know. His spirit it leads me, keeps me and frees me, 
that he gave me when he made me whole. Don't worry about me when it comes time to leave. I'm going to a far better place. Don't ever go strength, not made with hands, basking in his love and his grace, singing his praises through the countless ages with my Savior forever I'll be. His blessing is sure, give me strength for endurance. When my call comes, don't worry about me. How precious it's been with Jesus, my friend, walking together each day. He's with me in the valley, with me on the mountain. He'll be with me each trial I hold. There's a time and a place and a day when my journey towards home is complete. When my work here is done and my last song is sung, he'll call, but don't worry about me. Don't worry about me when it comes time to leave. I'm going to a far better place. Home ever go strength. Not made with him, blasting in his love and his grace, singing his praise through the countless ages with my Savior forever I'll be. His blessed sure gave me strength for endure. When my call comes, don't worry about me. His blessed assurance gave me strength for a dear. When my call comes, don't worry about me. A big crowd gathered. Everyone stood still. As the man called Jesus, I'm Father's feet. He struggled with the temple. Laid upon his back, a strong soldier waiting with hammer and spine, a ring in all the hands to be heard in Jerusalem. Pass through the nail in his hands and his feet, but then to God. They were building a bridge to cross Jordan. No. Oh, that bridge over Jordan built that day on Calvary. Oh, that bridge over Jordan still stands today for you and me. There's a day of coming, this we all know, we'll have to cross old Jordan when we leave this world below, but we can cross the sea, shout a victory song, for they build a bridge to cross Jordan. Oh, that bridge over to built that day on Calvary. Oh, that bridge over to still stands today for you and me. Still stands today for you and me. Jeremiah chapter 29. Verse 11. Let's all stand the ones that can for the reading of God's Word. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expect, expected end. 
Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me, and find me, when you search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations, and from all the places whither I have driven you, saith the Lord, and I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. Verse 13 says, And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. May we be seated. <coughs> Number one, in order to be saved, you've got to be under conviction. Amen. Number two, in order to be saved, you've got to be earnest. You've got to be truthful. You can walk up here and kneel down at this altar and say, Lord, save me. When you get up, you're as lost as you was when you kneeled down. If you're not earnest with God and you're not seeking God, then it's all in vain. I don't know any other way to put it. But God's got to be dealing with you. God's got to have you under conviction before you can uh, be saved. I've seen preachers lead a person up to the altar, kneel down with them, and tell them what to say. But in my opinion, they was just as lost as when they got up as they was and they knelt down. You can't get saved off another man's words. God's got you under conviction and you're earnest with God, you're truthful and you're seeking Him, you're going to ask Him in your own words. It don't have to be some elaborate talk, elaborate prayer. Because number one, if you've never been saved, you don't even know how to pray. But all you have to do is speak from your heart. Lord, I'm lost. Not necessarily in these words. Don't copy my words, because these are my words. They're not your words. But... got to ask God to forgive you your sins. you got to admit you're a sinner. Ask Him to forgive you. Let Him know you believe in it. Tell Him where you want to spend eternity. And be earnest. Be truthful. That's all it takes. It's simple. I believe an eight-year-old child, if God convicts them and lets them know that they're a sinner 
on their way to hell. I believe an eight year old can get saved. I believe a 90 year old man can be saved. God has no respect of persons. He has no respect of age. Any age, if God convicts them and lets them know where they're headed, can be saved. It's simple. And I've said this before. Today is a day of salvation. We're not promised tomorrow. Somebody could die during this service. <clears throat> and I'm not just talking the ones here. I'm talking the ones that's watching on the internet. Somebody could die before this service is over. Don't ever say I'll wait till tomorrow. God's got you under conviction. Kneel down where you're at and ask God to come into your life. Because tomorrow may be too late. Personally, I can't see how anybody want to live their life without God. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's beyond me how anybody could reject God being under conviction, just going about their business, never give it another thought. I just can't understand that. Of course, there's things in this world I don't guess it's meant to be understood. But how can a person under conviction, God speaking to them, seek me, find me, and you shall be saved? How can they just dismiss, dismiss that out of their mind and just keep going? I have no idea. And I shall be found of you, saith the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places whither I have driven you, saith the Lord. And I will bring you again to the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. You know, each and every person, each and every sinner, is being held captive by Satan. I'd say 90% don't even realize who they're serving. They don't realize that because they reject God, they're serving Satan. There's only two spirit worlds in this. There's there's only two spirits in this world. That's one of God, and one of Satan. If you're not serving God, you're serving Satan. You may not be doing it intentionally. But if you're not serving God, you're serving Satan. Now there are some that serve Satan and knows it. It's like that bunch up there in Raleigh last weekend. And they was in nine other states having the same demonstration. They're trying to do away with everything that God stands for. But I got news for them. God will not be done away with. God is the Almighty. He has power over Satan and death. And 
And if God speaks to your heart, and you just keep moving along the road you want to travel, God can take your life. Not only can He take your life, He can take a life of someone you love. Someone you love dearly. It could be a child. It could be your spouse. It could be your mother, your father, your grandfather, your grandmother. But one way or another, <clears throat> God will get your attention. I remember a time I was saved, but God was dealing with me to sing. And I wouldn't do it. I didn't want to give up my time. Because if you sing, you got to put in a lot of practice. You got to travel a lot of miles. I didn't want to do that. And you took somebody that's very near to me to get me back where I needed to be with him and to do his will. I'm not saying he's going to do that to everybody. But why, but why take a chance on losing somebody you love over something God has in store for you? Whether it be salvation or a calling. You know, everybody says, well, only preachers are called. Not right. God calls singers. He calls janitors. He's got a calling upon every one of us right here in this building today. And my question is, have we answered this call? Are we really true to God? Are we earnest with God? Now, if he told you to go down and mow every grave on this cemetery lot, would you do it? You'd, you'd be afraid not to, wouldn't you? Sister Oak, or Sister Rosie, if God told you, you're sitting at home, God told you, go wash him winters, would you do it? I'd do my best. <laughs> Sister Oak, if you're sitting at home and God said, go back in the church floor, would you do it? Absolutely. <laughs> Man, Amy, if you're sitting at home and God told you to go witness to somebody, would you do it? You better. <laughs> You know, I keep referring to what that guy said at her last singing. If God told me to go down there in front of one of those tombstones and preach my heart out, I'd do my very best to do it. Somebody drive by might think I'm an idiot, but that's the least of my worries what other people think. If God told me <coughs> I'll just pick out one. If God told me to go down there at that black 
tombstone down there. I can't, I can't even read the name on it. And pour my heart out. Because if we mind God and we listen to God, you know, God's got a, He's got a reason for everything. <clears throat> well, I went down there to that back cemetery, back uh, tombstone, and started preaching. Who knows? There may be somebody up here walking down this little driveway right here that don't know God. And they might hear the words that God's speaking through me. And they may kneel right there and be saved. That's right. Brother, if you're up here washing windows and you're humming a song and you've got a couple of windows open, Somebody could be passing by out there and hear you humming. And God could, God could convict them from that humming. Or you might be singing. Oh, you're in here running the vacuum cleaner. And God gets a hold of your heart and you start shouting. Running the aisles. There may be somebody walking up the, the road right there. Look in one of these windows and see. We'd both get a big blessing, wouldn't we? Yeah. <laughs> and you know, that, that person may be saved and just ain't listening to God. They say, hurry in here, running the aisles. Shout, praising God, they like to start doing the same thing. And get right with God in the meantime. God has a reason for everything. He had a reason for calling me to preach. I don't know why. Because before I was called to preach, you couldn't hire me stand in front of any crowd and say something. I just didn't have it in me. There's an old saying, I can't remember now how, how it, exactly it goes, but it's talking about when God calls somebody I can't remember how it goes, but anyway. <clears throat> he don't call the... I'm going to say it this way. It may not make no sense, but he don't call the need. He gives the need. That probably ain't making no sense, but God knew that I couldn't stand and talk in front of the crowd. But yet he called me. And when he called me and I accepted, he gave me the desire to stand and talk. Now I'm not the best talker in the world. Half of what I say may not make sense to some people. Probably more than that, but but anyway, I'm willing. And because I'm willing, God's going to reward. I'm not talking about me. He's going to reward every person that sits under my voice. Not because of something I've done but because I am obedient to God and I'm trying my best to bring His Word out 
in a way that people can understand it. I don't know if y'all understand what I'm saying or not, but, but that's my desire is to bring the word out in a way that people can understand it. You know, I, when I was first called to preach, well, even after I took the church, I've said it, I said, God's going to turn me loose one of these days and let me be a fireball preacher. That may not be God's intentions for me. Look at Charles Stanley. He's one of the greatest preachers that's living today. But is he a fireball preacher? He stays calm, cool, and collected. And God showed me you don't have to be a fireball preacher. You just have to be obedient. And that's my prayer. When you pray for me, pray. I never want to stand behind this pulpit or any other pulpit without God. Because I'm nothing. I'm nobody. And I'm trying to tell everybody about somebody. Right, Beth? Best favorite song too. She loves that song too. I'm a nobody. I'm trying to tell everybody about the somebody that can give it all. That did give it all. So that we could have the everlasting life. But whatever you do. When God speaks to your heart, whether it's been, whether it's because you're lost, if He places you under conviction, if He tells you to go and talk to somebody, if He tells you to come more the windows or back in the church, Don't put it off to tomorrow. If he spoke to your heart and told you to do something, he has a reason. And if you say, Lord, I'll do that tomorrow. I'm just too busy today. Tomorrow may be too late. No matter what he tells you to do. Because he has a reason for telling you or for calling you, or putting you under conviction. Whatever he does, he has a reason. And we should never put off what God tells us to do. Amen? Amen. Fathers, I come to you this morning. Lord, I just pray, Lord, that this message has touched somebody's life. Touch her soul. And Father, I want to apply this to myself, Lord, because I never, ever want to put off what you can see needs to be, to be done today. I never want to put it off to the morning, Lord. Father, if you're speaking to someone in this church, Father, if you're speaking to someone on the internet, Lord, as they're listening to this message, Father, Father, I just pray, Lord, that you'd send that power of conviction upon them, Lord. And Father, that they would act upon your command 
today. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to stand here today, Lord. Lord, I thank you for what you've given me this morning, Lord. Father, I pray that your will will always be done within this church, Lord. Father, go with us. Be with us as we go back home, Lord. Let God and direct each and every one of us, Lord, and keep us all safe from harm. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Is there anybody here this morning that needs prayer? Is there anybody here this morning that God's been dealing with you to do something? And you've not answered that call. Don't put it off to the morrow. This altar is open. This altar is always open. As long as I'm pastor, you don't have to wait. There's no altar call, because a lot of times I don't give an altar call, because I don't feel led to. But if any time don't matter if the choir is singing, it don't matter if Philip or Daniel's teaching, it don't matter when. When you feel a tug that you need to be in this altar, this altar is always open. If anybody needs to make a move, today is the day. Don't wait till tomorrow. I thank everybody for coming out this morning. Thank everybody for watching in on Facebook and YouTube. And I want to take this time out to wish everybody a happy 4th of July. And let's try our best to keep the true meaning of independence this 4th of July. I hope we have a peaceful weekend all over this nation, all over the world this 4th of July. Because that's what this nation needs. We need to get back to God, but we also need a peaceful weekend with no riots, no marches, no... Uh, No disruption. No confusion. You know, that's all a riot or a, a... What's the word I'm looking for? The... Uh, yeah, demonstration. You know, that, that's all they are. It's, it's, it's confusion. And who's the author of confusion, Daniel? The devil. Amen. Satan is the author of confusion. So, please, everybody, be peaceful. And be blessed this 4th fourth, fourth of July weekend. I don't know. If, I don't know if any of our members has plans to travel or whatever. But if you do, I pray God's blessings on you. Pray that you keep safe. God bless you. Till next Sunday. Amen.